Thanks for joining us here at Functional Bliss, where Audra and Jessica will guide you through exercises and wellness techniques to help you live your best life every day. It's in the name after all, Functional Bliss. Before you do anything else, click like and subscribe and ring the bell so you'll know whenever we put up a new video. To join our Blissful Gang for live Zoom classes where you can get more direct suggestions and encouragement, go to our website and sign up. Check the class description below for any equipment needs, grab your gear, and let's get started. So I'm going to start, I'm going to, I'll be facing out to you, but if you like just that ease of transition, then you might choose to just position yourself towards the front end of your mat. And I've got my yoga strap towards the front end of my mat right now, because we'll do a little shoulder over just to kind of warm up the shoulders before we get to that stand, uh, to that seated yoga mudra. So get yourself into a nice, just a, just a good even stance. So feet about hip or shoulder distance apart. And then once you're there, we're going to go into Anjali Mudra. So prayer hands to heart center right away. And just for today, now, normally I don't give much specific cues as to whether your fingers are spread apart or they're close together. But if you can, for this morning, fingers slightly close together, a little gentle pressure between your palms, thumbs to sternum to start, pause here for just a moment and take a breath. Notice your feet connected to the ground. Notice your breath coming in and out of your body. Noticing the feet connected to the ground, then notice the solidness of the ground beneath you. And then within that solidness, keeping your eyes closed if you can, <clears throat> or just keeping your eyes focused on a single point. So we're not going to try to look around, but we're going to try to feel around. So think about the floor underneath your feet, and then see if you can just draw a line in every direction out from the points of your feet to the where you'll find the edges of your room. So the edges of the floor in your room. Use your imagination, and then you're going to walk those edges up so you know where the walls are around you, the ceiling above you, all the space in between. So with that solidness all around you in that space, and then breathe into that space for a moment. So just take a nice, generous breath. Go for two more generous breaths if you can, but on each exhalation, just let your shoulders get a little softer, let your jaw get a little softer. And then let your awareness come back to your hands and notice, did you lose any integrity in your hands? Can you draw the fingers slightly closer to each other? Can you bring that thumb to your sternum? Elbows wider, elbows soft. That's going to be totally up to you just for right now, what feels better in your shoulders. And then gently bow your head towards your heart. Pause here for a moment. Take another breath. And then before we start to move and deeply engage the body, pause here for a moment and set an intention to honor your mind and your body throughout your practice. Never doing anything that would cause your body pain and treating yourself with love, care, and respect. With that intention set, keeping your eyes closed just for another moment, if you can, you're going to imagine that you're drawing energy up from the soles of your feet. So your soles of your feet are like straws sucking up from the earth. So suck that energy up and then just let that energy lift gently up through your legs. We don't want to lock out our kneecaps, but we want the thigh muscles to lift just slightly. And then lift that energy up through your spine, get a little bit taller up through the crown of your head. And then once you've found that sense of upward lifting momentum from the soles of the feet up to the crown of your head, come back to that awareness of your hands connected to each other, sides of the fingers touching if you can. And then when you're ready, open your eyes gently and we're going to move with the breath. Inhale, prayer hands together, arms are going to go up and overhead, look to your hands. Exhale, bring your hands back to heart center. And now we're going to press the palms forward. So fingertips are just going to shine forward. Inhale, reaching out away from your heart space. Exhale, pull it back into your heart. Inhale, reaching up, looking up. Exhale, bring it back to your heart with a gentle pressure between the palms now. So maybe the elbows stay a little bit wider, a little bit more engaged. Inhale, reaching out straight from the heart space. 
Exhale, bring it back into your heart. Inhale, reaching up and overhead. Exhale, bring it back to your heart. Inhale, reaching forward. Exhale, bring it back to your heart. We're going to go three more cycles of breath, but you're going to move with your breath's rhythm. So find a pace and a depth of work that makes good sense to you. And then just find your breath here. And then the next time you find your arms up and overhead, we're going to interlace the fingers slightly, and then the pointers are going to be up towards the ceiling. So maybe you come through that heart center, interlace the fingers, pointers up, bring the arms up and overhead, and then we're going to take it into some little, little TikToks from side to side, starting to wake up the spinal column, starting to open up through the side of the body. So we get those side body muscles, the rib cage moving just a little bit, and then we increase some space in the side of our body to just let a little bit more breath come in. Go for a little bit of a dynamic pace here, but with a little bit of upward reaching. So we wanna still feel like we're reaching up through the arms, up through that, the pointer fingertips up towards the sky. All right, take one or two more TikToks from side to side, just either even yourself out or just find your way back to a nice even set. And then as you come through center, you're gonna unlace your fingers and now we're gonna move right into some standing twists. So one arm is gonna go back. You're gonna to look to that back hand. Inhale, you'll bring it through center. Exhale and twist to the other side. And then here you're gonna find again that pace of breath that makes good sense to you. Inhale as you come up and through. Exhale as you twist and look back to your hand. Keep a slight sense of softness to your knees and a little bit of looseness. So usually I'll say, keep your hip points pointing forward. But for, for this morning, as we warm up the spine and give a little time, let your hips and your knees gently move a little bit. So let there be a little bit of a softness to the knees, a little bit of rotation to the hips. Notice how your knees feel. Notice how your hips feel. Notice how your back feels. The next time you twist to the right or when the next time your right hand is to the back of your body, you're going to pause there for a moment, looking over your shoulder, taking a nice generous breath, maybe expanding out through your arms, expanding out through your heart space. And then on your next inhale, bring it back up and through center. And we're going to twist to the other side and we're going to pause there for a moment, looking to the left hand, opening a little bit through the heart space, reaching out generously through the fingertips. And then when you're ready, bring it back in and we're gonna take it right into that position where our hands would be set up for a little chair pose. And then we're gonna go baby chair. So a little bend of the knees and then rise right back up. Baby chair, just a little bend of the knees. Rise right back up. Baby chair, a little bend to the knees. Rise right back up. And now we're gonna go baby chair. Hands are gonna find the thighs. Bring the heart forward just a little bit straighten the legs find that little bit of a flat back situation and then use a hip hinge come up to standing inhale reach up grab that ball above your head sink into a baby chair hands to the thighs bring the heart forward lift your butt find that semi flat back position and then come up from your hip hinge bring the arms up grab that beach ball above your head sink into a baby chair hands find the thighs heart comes forward lifting the butt or pushing the butt back, however you like to think about it. And then keep that hip hinge come up to standing. Inhale, reaching up, grab that beach ball one last time, sink into a baby chair. And now we're gonna sink into that chair, hands to the thighs, but now we're gonna stay in this little bit of a crouch position and we're gonna do that abdominal pumping. So it's gonna bring a little bit of heat to the body right away. So take a moment here just to find that good solid stance. You wanna feel like our feet are solid on the ground, legs are nice and strong. Take an inhalation. And Trish, I don't know if you've been here for our stomach pump. We've done Uddiyana Banda where we hold the abdominal muscles, but now we're going to inhale, exhale, hold the exhale, and then we pump the abdominal muscles in that position. And we're going to go for about 10 pumps of the abdomen. So take your nice big inhalation. Exhale. At the end of the exhale, you suck the belly in and you retain the exhalation and then you pump your abdominal muscles. You're gonna hold the exhale. You're gonna go for about 10 pumps. So it's a little bit of a quick pace. Mm 
Once you've done about 10 pumps of the abdominal muscles, take your time, slowly rise up and then bring one hand to the belly, one hand to the heart. Pause here for a moment and just notice. Notice the energy in your center. Notice if you created a little extra sense of heat in the body. Nice. And then if you're not already there, maybe find your way to the front end of your mat and then find your mountain pose. Toes and knees pointing fairly forward, rooting down into the feet, lifting up through the top of the head and bringing just a little bit of life and energy down into your hands. Inhale, reaching your arms up. Exhale, bend your knees, hinge from your waist, fold down to the ground. Inhale to half forward fold. Keep that length in your spine. Bend your knees, push with intention into your feet. Inhale, rise all the way back up. Hands to heart center. Hands down at your sides. We're going to do two more just like that. Inhale, arms up, look up. Exhale, bend your knees and fold. Inhale, half forward fold. Keep that length in your spine. Bend your knees, push into your feet. Inhale, arms up. Hands to heart center. Hands down at your sides. Inhale, arms up, look up. Exhale, bend your knees and fold. Inhale, half forward fold. Keep that length in your spine. Bend your knees, push into your feet. Inhale, arms up. Hands to heart center with a little pressure between the palms, fingers together, elbows wide. Inhale, lift your heels up away from the ground. Exhale, float your heels back down. Inhale, lift your heels up. Exhale, float your heels down. Do that one more time. Inhale, lift your heels up. Exhale, float your heels down. Let your hands come down at your sides. And now we're going to find our way down into a tabletop position. So inhale, arms up, look up. Exhale, bend your knees and fold. Bend your knees a lot so the hands plant down onto the ground and then we'll find our way back to tabletop position. So come down onto all fours. But if you like to cushion your knees, maybe you make sure that there's that little cushion underneath you. And then once you're in that tabletop position, we're moving right into a cat cow. Inhale, drop your belly, lift your chest, lift your tail. Exhale to round your back and then see if you can find a nice even pressure. So even pressure down between your hands and your knees. Pressing evenly down into the hands, pressing evenly down into the knees, and then move through the spine just as much as feels good. Go for two more cycles of breath if you can. Beautiful. And then once you've done that last cycle of breath, come into a neutral spine, curl both sets of toes under, take a gentle rock forward and back. Just wake up the toes, wake up the bottoms of the feet. Notice how your feet feel. Awesome. And then the next time your butt comes back toward your heels, not all the way back. So we don't even want to go for the butt touching the heels, but just a little bit back into the heels. And then see, feel into your feet, notice your toes. And if your toes are a little bit close, see if you can just take a moment to spread your toes just a little bit more and then press gently back into your palms so that there's a little bit more weight into your heels, into the bottoms of your feet. Take a nice big breath. We're going to keep our butt weight back towards our feet, but now we're going to use the toes as if you're trying to push your butt away. So press into the pads of your toes and then bring it back. And we're going to just do that rocking, but we're going to imagine that the rocking is generated by pressing into the pads of the toes. So finding a little bit of strength or activation in the toes and the bottoms of the feet. Go for about three more rocks forward and back with the toes trying to generate the source of action. Nice. And then once you last one is your shoulders come in line with the wrist, lift up your toes, release them down to the ground. And now we're going to pick up the right hand. We're going to spin it around. So the right fingertips are pointing towards your knee. And then once you've got your way there, we're gently rocking forward and back. Nothing extreme. Just go for a light and gentle motion. Notice how your wrist feel. Notice how your hand feels. Beautiful. One more rock forward and back. And then we're going to pick up that right hand and now we're going to flip it. So now we're going to point the fingertips towards the knee, but with the palm facing up. So we're going to go single hand so that we don't injure ourselves. And then you're just going to pause for a moment, be mindful about how your forearm and your wrist feel. And then you're going to rock yourself forward and back, but you're going to go super light. Tuning in, we want to achieve a little bit of a stretch or stress in the forearm of the right hand, but we don't want to go so far that we injure our wrist. 
All right, now the next time you pull back and you feel that little bit of extra stressing sensation, you're gonna pause there for a moment, take a nice big breath. Beautiful, and then when you're ready, release that wrist, flip it around, get, set it back to right. Now we're gonna pick up the left hand and turn the fingers. So the fingers are pointing towards the knee, but the palm is facing down. And then once you've got your way there, little micro rocks forward and back. One more little micro rock forward and back, and then we're gonna flip it. So we're fingertips are pointing towards the knee, but the palm is facing up. And then once you found your way there, micro rocking forward and back, checking in, noticing the wrist, noticing the forearm, making sure it feels like a good movement in your body. And then the next time you pull back and you feel that little sense of stress or stretch in the forearm, pause there for a moment, take a breath. Beautiful. And then when you're ready, release. And now we're going to take it into a, just a little bit of an upper body temper tantrum. So we're just going to kind of pat our hands on the ground. Maybe find a little bit of impact. Don't injure yourself, but find just a little bit of stimulation in the bottoms of the hands. A little stimulation that comes up the arms and up into the upper body. One more slap of each hand on the ground and then take it down into your feet and you're gonna make as much vigorous noise with your feet at the bottom of your mat as you can. So toenails pointing down for me, but you arrange your feet in a way that makes the most sense. Bring a little bit of heat. So we wanna feel like our leg muscles are working a little bit hard to find this little speed. Go for about three more cycles of breath here. Keep those legs moving, keep those feet pumping, patting on the ground. Nice, one more cycle of breath. And then when you're ready, we're gonna move it into extended child's pose. So we're gonna go big toes together, walk your knees out nice and wide, pull your butt back towards your heels as you head back towards that extended child's pose. And then once you hit the end of your range of motion, bring it right back up, shoulders in line with the wrist. Pull your butt back towards your heels and then come right back up. Pull your butt back towards your heels. Come right back up. And this time we're going to go back and stay there for just one cycle of breath. So pull your butt back. Give your body a moment. Just get settled in. Go as far back as feels good. Make sure your butt feels good. Knees feel good. Space for the belly and the chest. And then once you've found your way there, one nice, big, generous inhalation. One nice, slow, slow exhalation. Beautiful. And then when you're ready, lifting your way up to tabletop position, curl your toes under. We're going to exhale, lift up into a downward facing dog. And once you've got your downward facing dog, start to pedal out the legs, bend one knee and press into the opposite heel. Lovely, one more pedal of each heel, and then we're gonna go heel lifts together. So double heel lifts, you're just gonna lift your heels up and then press your heels down and go for about three more, just finding a little bit of a rhythm that makes good sense to your body. Awesome, and then when you're ready, we're gonna float back down to a tabletop position. So take your time as you lower your way down. And now we're gonna go for a little bit of a push up and a little bit of a child's pose. So you're gonna shift forward a little bit so that your body weight comes forward and you're in a semi planking position. Go for a little bit of a push up and then go back like you're going for a little bit of a child's pose. Come forward, go for a little bit of a push up, calling on the strength in the back of the body and then go back for a little bit of a child's pose. Go for a little bit of a push up. Come back for a little bit of a child's pose. One more time through a little bit of a push up. A little bit of a child's pose. And then this time, as we come forward for that little bit of a push up, we're going to come all the way down on our belly. So take your time as you lower your way down. And then once you're down on your belly, we're going to go for three low cobras here. Hands alongside the shoulders, elbows soft and tucked in at the ribs. Inhale, gently lift your heart up just a little bit. Exhale and lower it down. Inhale and lift your heart up. Exhale, lower it down. This time we're gonna inhale, lift the heart up, pause there for a moment, 
See how it feels to just lift your hands away from the floor, notice the strength in the back of your body, and then more specifically, notice how the back of your body feels, notice your spine, notice your energy here. So we're in this low back bend and we're calling upon the strength of the body. But if you're already here and this feels like this is asking a lot, then when we get further down our practice and we go for our bow pose, you might choose to just come back here and call upon the strength in this way. This is a nice way to find strength through the back of the body and opening through the front heart space. So pause here for one more moment. And then when you're ready, relax your hands down, maybe let your forehead rest on the floor for a moment, relax your butt muscles, relax all the muscles in the back of your body. Nice, and now we're gonna stay in this belly down position, but we're gonna to start to take it into some knee bends. So you'll rearrange your hands and your arms in a way that makes good sense to you. We're just gonna bend our knees and then swish the knees a or swish the heels a little bit side to side. And then go for a little bit of a dynamic pace if you can, just assuming that your back feels good about the work. All right, one more swish of the heels from side to side, and then we're going to go for a single leg action. So left leg is just going to reach down, let it rest on the ground, and now we're just going to move the right leg. One more time side to side with the right leg, and then float that foot down, bend your left knee, and then swing it from side to side. Nice, take one more swing from side to side. And then as you float that foot down, we're gonna power up to a planking position. So if powering up doesn't feel good, then you'll use your knees or come up through a table. But if it feels good to do so, curl your toes under, firm up your hands, press the floor away from you, come up nice and strong into that planking position. Once you're in your planking position, broaden your shoulders, double tuck your chin, squeeze your butt together just a little bit, press into your heels. Notice all of the strength in your body. Wonderful. And then when you're ready, slowly bring your knees down into tabletop position. From our tabletop position, we're going to step our right foot forward like we're going for a lunging position and then step it back to table. Step your left foot forward like you're going towards that lunging position. Step it back to table. Now we're going to alternate between those two sides, finding a little space to move. Don't worry about getting it perfect. Don't worry about getting your foot in some particular shape or place. We're just moving big, gigantic movement from the hip stepping it forward and then stepping it back and then finding that space like how do you rearrange your hands how do you navigate your body on your mat Take one more time each side at this nice dynamic pace. And then the next time the right foot steps forward into that lunging position, we're gonna pause there for a moment. So for me, I've got my legs slightly wide, but I want, what I'll want is I want it to be a little bit more in the midline of my body. We're gonna move into some rocking half splits. So you'll rearrange your leg. For some of us, it'll feel better to have it in that wider position. For some of us, it's gonna feel slightly better to walk it in and have a slightly more narrow position. So get yourself arranged where it's going to feel good to fluidly move forward and back, get that back knee arranged nicely. And then once you feel like you've got your body set up, now take it into those rocks forward and back, finding that low lunge position, finding that half splits position. And then once you make sure you the back knee feels good, make sure the front knee feels good. And then once you've found a depth of work here that's working for you, add that little bit of movement of the heart space. So as you come forward, lift your chest, lift your chin. And then as you round back, maybe look towards your back knee or towards your abdomen or towards your belly button. All right, now the next time you pull back to that half splits position, stay there, walk your hands in a little bit closer to your standing leg knee lift through the front of your body, make a little bit of space through your front of your heart. And then once you found that little bit of space, space, now keep that length in your spine and soften your nose towards your knee. 
Hopefully here feeling a little bit of stress in the back of the thigh or in the hamstring muscles, take a breath. Nice, and then as we come forward into our lunging position, now we're gonna play around with that back knee. So we're gonna swing that back foot in, and swing it out, swing it in and swing it out. Just take a couple swings here just to make sure that feels like a good position. If you get there and you do one and your knee is like, don't do that again, then don't do it again. But if it feels good to take a little bit of a swing in and out, just pivoting that back knee so it feels comfortable. And then the next knee pivots out, we're gonna lift up and go like we're going for extended child's pose. So think of this as a supportive, low-lying warrior two-like position, elbow to the knee, ribs are gonna lift away from the thigh, top hand's gonna reach up and overhead, get a little side body stretch. And then we're gonna lift that hand and tuck it behind the back of the body and pull the shoulder back slightly. Lift the arm up, get that little bit of a side bend but the ribs are still lifting away from the thigh. Lift the arm up, tuck it behind the back of the body, draw the shoulder back. Do that one more time. Reach up and get that little side body stretch. Lift it up, tuck the hand behind, draw the shoulder back. This time, turn your head, look up towards the sky, take a breath. As we release, we're gonna keep our legs just as they are, but now we're gonna release our hands and we're gonna walk out dog shape at a 45 degree angle. So you're down to the ground, keep your legs in the position that they are, walk out about at a 45 degree angle, walk your hands out like the upper body's going for a down dog shape. Your heart down, take a nice big breath. One more breath here. And then when you're ready, we're gonna walk the hands back in so that we're coming towards that front foot. We're gonna swing that back foot out and around and then curl the back toes under, pick that back knee up and we're gonna kick that front leg into a three-legged dog. So big sweep of that leg towards the back end of your mat, shoot it up to the sky, keep your hips square and then push into that heel like you're trying to push your heel towards the corner of your ceiling. Shoulders are square, hips are square, take a breath. And then when you're ready, gently float down into your tabletop position. And now we're gonna go left leg stepping forward into that big lunge position. Once you've got your lunge position, whether it's narrow or whether it's wide, totally up to you, get yourself arranged, check that back knee, make sure it all feels good. And then into those half splits and rocking forward into that lunging position, but finding a slightly dynamic pace if you can. Now one knee might behave very differently from the other and one hip might behave differently from the other. So move on this side in a way that makes good sense to your body. And then once you've got that rocking motion going on, now we add that little lift of the heart space. So as you come forward, you lift your chest, lift your gaze. As you come back, you'll look toward your belly button. Nice, now the next time you come back to that half splits position, walk your hands in a little bit closer, lift through the front of your heart space, keep that length through the front of your heart space and soften your nose towards your knee. Take a breath. Beautiful, and then when you're ready, rock yourself forward coming into that low lunge position, but now we're gonna do that pivot of the back foot. So you're gonna just pivot that back foot, check your knee, make sure it feels good. Options to cushion the knee, options to leave this part off if it's not feeling good. So always make sure you only do the work that makes good sense to your body. And then the next time that foot swings out, if you're doing that pivot maneuver, now we're gonna come up like we're going for that side angle. So elbow to the knee, ribs lifting up, top hand is gonna reach up, stretching up alongside the head. And then lifting that arm back up, tuck it behind your body, draw the shoulder back and maybe turn your head, look up and then release. Bring that arm up alongside your ear, get that little side body stretch. Lift it up, tuck the hand behind, draw the shoulder back, maybe turn your head. Reach that hand up, get that little side body stretch. Lift the hand up, tuck it behind you, stay here for one extra cycle of breath. So tuck the hand, draw the shoulder back, turn your head, look up, come back to your breath. Beautiful, and then when you're ready, release that little half bind, hands are gonna come down to the ground, and then we're walking out at that 45 degree angle. So we're gonna walk out and away from our legs, upper body like it's going for a downward facing dog. So arms are reaching out, chest is softening down. Come back to your breath for a moment.
Beautiful. And then when you're ready, we're going to walk it back in nice and slow. So you're going to pivot that back knee. You're going to walk yourself forward. You're going to curl the back toes under, pick that back knee up. And then if it feels available, we're going to send that front leg up into that three-legged dog. So plant your palms, slip that leg back, lift it up, hip square, shoulder square, press back into that heel. Like you're trying to push your heel towards the corner of the ceiling. Beautiful. And then when you're ready, float that foot down to the ground, come into tabletop position, knees wide or knees close, totally up to you. But we're going to take just one breath in a child's pose or a child's pose like position. So go only as far back as feels like a restful place to be. Come back to your breath just for a moment. Beautiful. And then when you're ready, inhale, lift up to table, curl the toes under. Exhale, lift up into downward facing dog. Not even staying there. We're going to look forward, walk our feet up to meet our hands, come to a soft fold at the top of the mat. Once you're in that soft fold at the top of the mat, walk it a little side to side. Walk your fingers over to the right. Walk your fingers over to the left. And as you walk your fingers from side to side, let your eyes look at your feet and just notice the gentle bit of movement that happens in your toes and your feet and your ankles, that little navigation, your feet know what to do. You don't have to think about it too much, but they know how to pivot. They know how to move with you. So it's fun sometimes to just watch them and admire the work that they're doing. All right, one more walk from side to side and then bring it back to center. Lift from the arches of your feet, bend your knees a lot, pull your abdominal muscles in, roll your way up to standing, take your time as you come up. And then we're gonna go big gigantic rolls of the shoulders. So you're gonna go through about five times, rolling the shoulders around, down and back. We're looking to warm up the muscles. We're looking to find a little bit of a friction in the bony structure. And we're feeling the movement of the fabric of our clothes against our skin. So lots of stuff happening here. Go for about three more if you can. Beautiful. And then when you're ready, reverse directions, go the other way. For me, going in reverse on this particular move takes a second to smooth it out, but then see if you can find that big, smooth, generous movement. Notice the muscles, notice your bones, notice the fabric of your clothes moving against your skin. Go for one more time around. And then when you're ready, inhale, arms up, look up. Exhale, bend your knees and fold. If your yoga strap is down on the ground, you're going to go ahead as you come back up to standing. Bend your knees a lot. Pull your abdominal muscles in. Roll your way up to standing. And then we're going to take that strap right behind the back and start with a little bit of a pumping action. So arms are just going to pump forward and back. Once you've got that pumping action going on for a moment here, we're going to come a little integrity in the front of the body. So keep your arms pumping. Let that kind of get onto autopilot for a minute. Lift from the arches of your feet. Check your knees. We want to make sure the kneecaps are gently lifted and the thighs are slightly engaged, but we're not locking the kneecaps out. So lift up through the front of the legs. Imagine that your front hip bones are drawing in towards each other. So there's still a sense of strength in our center. Notice your chest, notice your rib cage, notice your solar plexus. So if everything's kind of puffing forward as you pump the arms, now see, can you pull the hip points in towards each other? Pull the ribs in towards each other. Keep the center of your body nice and stable. And then the next time your arms lift out and away from the back of the body, hold there for a moment. Feel that strength in your center. We're going to take this right into a fold. Bend your knees, hinge from your waist, fold over and let your arms fall as far away from the body as feels good. Take one more breath. Hands are going to find the low back. Bend your knees, lift from the top of your head. So think hip hinge as you push firm into your feet. Come up nice and slow and controlled. Pause for a moment at the top. Make sure you get your blood flow back to an equilibrium. And then take your yoga strap and just kind of toss it to the back end of your mat. We won't need it again until we hit that yoga mudra on the ground. Once you've got that set out of the way, find your mountain pose. Toes and knees pointing fairly forward, an upward lifting energy through the crown of your head. And we're going to pick up the pace just a little bit from here. Inhale, arms up, look up. Exhale and fold. Inhale, half forward fold. Exhale to soften down, stepping the right leg back, warrior two. Drop the back heel, turn the toes out. Right hand is going to pick you up. Pause for a moment here, and we're going to do little toe ball lifts of that front foot. So you're going to press into the front heel, lift the toe and the ball of the foot, and then reset it down. Lift the toe and the ball of the foot, reset it down. 
lift the toe and the ball of the foot, reset it down, sink a little bit deeper into that front thigh, and then go into your side angle. Elbow to the knee, top hand is gonna reach up, get a little stress or stretch through that side body, and then lift it up, release it, tuck the hand behind you, go for that little half bind, draw the shoulder back, turn your head, look up towards the sky, and then release. Arm is gonna shoot up to the sky, lift right into your warrior two position, and now we're gonna circle the hands around and down. So cartwheel your hands down, pivot your back foot, finding runner's lunge. Once you've got runner's lunge, bring that back knee down, one half splits here, pull the hips back, rock yourself forward, find your way back to a planking position. So maybe picking that knee up, plant your palms, slide that front foot back. Once you found that planking position, lower your knees, lower all the way down to your belly. One low cobra here, inhale, lift your heart up. Exhale to lower down, either power up to plank or take it through a table to plank. And then find your way up to downward facing dog. Right leg is gonna come up into three-legged dog, but keep the hips square. So toe and knee pointing down, push your heel towards the corner of the ceiling, take a breath. And then we're gonna loosen it up, kick that leg up nice and high and see if you can step that foot through to the top of your mat into a lunging position. Once you've got that lunging position, heart forward, look forward, take a breath. And then we're just gonna step that back foot up into forward fold. Inhale to half forward fold, keep that length in your spine, bend your knees, push into your feet, inhale, arms up. Hands to heart center, hands down at your sides and then pause here just for a moment. Notice your breath, notice the warmth of your body. When you're ready, inhale, arms up, look up. Exhale and fold. Inhale, half forward fold. Exhale to soften down, left leg back, warrior two. Drop the back heel, turn the toes out. Left hand is gonna pick you up. Lifting the toe and the ball of that front. Lift the toe and the ball. Reset the foot down. Lift the toe and the ball of the foot. Reset it down. Lift the toe and the ball of the foot. Reset it down, sink a little bit further into that front thigh and then into that side angle. Elbow to the knee. Top hand lifts up, get that little stretch or stress to the side of the body, and then release that hand, tuck up behind the back into that half bind position, draw the shoulder back, turn your head, look up towards the sky, take a breath. Beautiful, and then we're gonna lift up back into that warrior two position. So release, lift yourself back up, and then ground, finding that runner's lunge position, finding our way back to plank. So maybe plant your palms, step back to plank, totally up to you. Lower your knees or lower down in a way that makes good sense to your body. This time we're gonna come into a low cobra position, but our arms are gonna reach back. So release your hands, reach them back like they're alongside your hips, palms facing up. And then we're gonna lift the heart, reach through the fingers, pause here for a moment. Notice the strength in the back of your body. Release nice and slow. Hands are gonna come alongside the shoulders, either power up to plank or take it through your table. Find your way up to your downward facing dog. Left leg is gonna come up into three-legged dog, but the hips are square, toe and knee are pointing down, and we push that heel towards the corner of the ceiling. And now loosen it up, kick that leg up nice and high, step it through to the top of your mat, find your runner's lunge. And then once you're there, step that back foot up to meet, find your forward fold. Inhale, half forward fold, keep that length in your spine, bend your knees, push into your feet, inhale, arms up. Prayer hands are going to come through heart center as you sink into a chair. Rise back up, lift your hands. Now we're going to add a little bit of a twist to our chair. So as you exhale, you're going to sink into a little twisted chair. Elbow is going to tap the side of the knee. Inhale, bring it back up through center. Exhale, twist and tap that elbow to the other side. Inhale, bring it back here. Exhale, twist and tap. Inhale, bringing it up. Exhale, twist and tap. One more time through each side. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, twist and tap. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, twist and tap. Inhale, lifting up through center. As we exhale, we're just gonna take a nice big swan dive, folding down to the ground. Inhale, half forward fold. Exhale to soften down. Step the right leg back, warrior two. Drop the back heel, turn the toes out. Right hand is gonna pick you up. One toe ball lift, so lift that toe, lift the heel, or lift the toe, lift the ball to the foot. Reset it down, sink a little bit deeper into that front thigh. Elbow to the knee, ribs lifting away. 
arm reaches up alongside the ear, take a breath. Take that hand and tuck it behind you just as far as it will go, maybe finding the hip crease. Draw the shoulder back, turn your head, look up towards the sky. Take one good breath. Release that hand tucked behind you, float right into your warrior two. Circle your hands around, finding your runner's lunge. Bring that back knee down, one half splits. Pull the hips back, peel the front toes up. Rock yourself forward, relift that back knee, plant your palms, step back to plank. Lower down into your belly in any way that makes good sense to you. And now we're gonna go for one high cobra. So just as high as you like, hands alongside the shoulders, inhale, lift your heart up. Exhale to lower down, either power up to plank or take it through a table. We'll find our way up to a downward facing dog. Right leg is gonna shoot up into that three-legged dog, but hips are gonna stay facing down. Toe and knee are pointing down. Push your heel towards the corner of your ceiling and then loosen it up, kick that leg up nice and high, step it through to the top of your mat. Find your runner's lunge. Step that back foot up to meet, find forward fold. Inhale, half forward fold, keep that length in your spine. Bend your knees, push into your feet, inhale, arms up. Hands to heart center. Hands down at your sides. We're going to take it right to the other side. Inhale, arms up, look up. Exhale and fold. Inhale, half forward fold. Exhale, soften down. Left leg back, warrior two. Drop the back heel, turn the toes out. Left hand is going to pick you up. One lift of the toe and the ball of the foot. Reset it down, sink a little bit deeper. Elbow to the knee, come into that side angle position. And then when you're ready, tuck that hand behind you into that half bind position. Maybe the fingers find the hip crease. Maybe you draw the shoulder back. Maybe you turn your head, look up, take a breath. As you release, take it back through that warrior two position. Circle your hands around and down. From runner's lunge, bring that back knee down, one half splits, pull the hips back, peel the front toes up. Rock yourself forward. Back knee, plant your palms, step back to plank. In plank position, lower yourself down nice and slow. And then one high cobra, just as high as you like. Exhale as you lower down. Either power up to a plank or take it through your table and then find your way to downward facing dog. Left leg is gonna come up into three-legged dog. Push that heel towards the corner of your ceiling. And then loosen it up, kick it up nice and high, step it through to the top of your mat, finding runner's lunge. And then when you're ready, step that back foot up to meet, forward fold. Inhale, half forward fold. Exhale to soften down, press firm into your feet. Your arms all the way up and overhead. Hands to heart center, fingers together, palms together, elbows wide, pause here for just a moment. Notice your body. Notice the warmth that's in your body. Notice the breath in your body. Take one more moment. And then when you're ready, inhale, arms up, hands meet at the top, chest gently lifts as you look up. Exhale and fold. Inhale, half forward fold. Exhale to soften down, step both feet back to downward facing dog. Right leg is gonna kick up nice and high, three-legged dog, but this time bend the knee, let the hip roll open, take one good breath. Release that leg and we're gonna switch it right to the other side. Left leg is gonna lift up nice and high, bend the knee, let the hip roll open, take one. Release that nice and slow, shift forward into a planking position. And then we're gonna go into our bow pose from here. So if you like to cushion your hip points or cushion your belly, take a second, grab your blanket, slide it underneath you. And then when you're ready, lower your knees, lower gently down. To start, arms are gonna be in a crocodile position just to give the upper body a little bit of cushion and support. So stack your hands, elbows wide, forehead can rest wherever it likes. And we're just gonna start with that bend of the knees, switch the heels side to side. Check in now and notice how does your back feel? We've done a lot of work. So if you did something and your back was like, hey, making itself known in a way that's not good, then you might go for a soft position or no bow at all. That if things are feeling good, we're gonna start by releasing the left leg down to the ground. Right heel's gonna come a little bit closer to the butt. How does it feel to reach your right hand back, catch hold of that foot, maybe the top of the foot, maybe the ankle. And then once you've got hold of the foot, heart is gonna shine forward. 
Gaze is going to come forward. Notice the tops of your thighs or the front of your thighs. Notice your front pocket area. Notice your belly. Beautiful. And then when you're ready, slowly, carefully, mindfully release. And we're going to switch right to the other side. Left knee is going to bend. We're going to reach that left hand back. Catch hold of the foot. Heart forward, look forward. Notice your knee. Notice your belly. Notice your shoulder. Notice your breath here. So if you're already now, your breath might be up a little bit because we did some heated work, right? But if you're laboring in your breath and this handhold is a struggle, then you'll just go for a bow without a handhold, heels towards the butt. But now see how it feels to release both hands behind you, bend both knees. Can you catch hold of your ankles or the tops of your feet? Soft position to start. Notice how that feels. And that just might be enough. You might already be there and you have all the sensation that you need. Notice your breath here. And then if it feels good, you're gonna press your feet into your hands. Your hands are gonna resist. We're gonna go for three cycles of breath here. You're gonna feel that rocking sensation as you breathe in and out, nice, slow, rhythmic breath. And then once you've done about three cycles of breath, soften your handhold. Release your feet. Arms are going to come back to that crocodile position. And then maybe walk your feet out a little bit wide as well. And then let everything relax. So reduce as much efforting as possible and take about three nice deep breaths. Once you've taken about three nice deep breaths here, we're going to push our way back like we're going towards a child's post position just enough so that we can flip ourselves around, legs out in front of us so we can come into a seated forward fold. So you're just going to push yourself back in a way that makes good sense. Swing your legs out and around in front of you. And then once you've got your legs out in front of you, we're going to keep a good generous bend in the knees. Go up and overhead with your arms. Lift the rib cage up. Exhale and fold towards your feet. Doesn't matter if you can touch your feet. This is just to counter that nice big back bend that we just did. So take a moment here just to notice that little different shape of the back of the body. Take one more breath. And then normally I don't swing you around and swing you back around and then swing you back around again, but we are gonna swing it back around. So we did that little bit of a counter posture. Now swing your legs back around like you're heading towards that child's pose position, but now we're gonna grab our yoga strap and take it into our yoga mudra. So with yoga mudra, we come like we're going towards a child's pose position. We roll up onto the crown of our head and our hands fall away from the back of the body. If you've got anything going on with the head or the neck, it might be safer and better to just stay on the forehead and not roll all the way up because it is an unsupported position. Keep a little bit of the weight back into your heels. Hinge forward. Let your forehead find the ground first. See how that feels. If it feels safe and comfortable, you'll roll up onto the crown of your head, which means your toes, you're looking towards your toes. And then you're going to bring your arms up and overhead and let them fall generously away from the back of your body. Notice your viewpoint, see the world upside down. Notice your breath. Take one more moment here. And then when you're ready, release your hands, slowly lower back just enough that you can lift your head up away from the ground and then sit upright. So whether it's sitting back into that hero or thunderbolt pose or swinging your legs around, just so you're sitting upright just for a moment, notice your equilibrium. And then when you're ready, we're going to come right down onto our backside. So you're going to come down in any way that makes good sense to you. Flip yourself around. And then once you're down onto your back, go for a bent knee position like you're going for your bridge, pro, <laughs> bridge prep position. So knees bent, feet about hip width distance apart, heels fairly close to the butt. But we're just going to lift the heels. So hands on the ground, lift your heels up away from the earth, lower your heels back down. Lift your heels up away from the earth. Lower your heels back down. Lift your heels up away from the earth. Lower your heels. Exhale, we're going to lift the hips up. So go for that Pilates bridge, that kind of halfway bridge. Keep that halfway bridge. Lift your heels. Lower your heels. Lift your heels. 
lower your heels. Lift your heels, lower your heels, keep your heels down, roll your way down through your spine. So think upper back, middle back, low back, hips touch down, and we're gonna take it right into pelvic tilt. So you're gonna press your low back into the ground, release to the natural curve of your back. Press your low back into the ground, release to the natural curve of your back. Press your low back into the ground, release to the natural curve of your back, pick your legs up, hands are gonna find the fronts of the knees or tops of the knees. And now you're gonna go for like, you're going for apanasana, so where we go for knees into the chest, but your hands are gonna create a resistance. So you're gonna to try to push your knees in towards your chest, but your hands are gonna resist and you're gonna hold that resistance. Keep trying to get those knees towards the chest, hands are gonna stop them from happening. Hold that resistance and hold it for five, four, three, two, one, release that tension, pull your right knee toward your heart, let your left leg go nice and long. We're gonna move right into supine twist. Take that right knee over and across the body, right arm opens wide, head turns to the right, take three nice deep breaths here. Before we release the supine twist on this side, take your right hand, the hand that's out to the side and then stretch it up alongside your ear and then think big good morning stretch. So as you reach your hand up, you're gonna reach your hip down. So reach your hip like you're trying to reach it towards your left foot and reach your left, right hand up, up, up towards the edge of your mat. Find a little bit of length and space through the side of your body. And then when you're ready, release, pull your right knee back in towards your heart. Bring the left knee into meat. Hands are gonna come back into those kneecaps. Push your knees into your hands. Hands are gonna resist. Hold that resistance. Hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Relax that resistance. Pull the left knee toward your heart. Let your right leg go nice and long. Supine twist over to the other side. Bring the knee over and across the body. Left arm opens wide, head turns to the left. Before we release our twist on this side, take your left hand and extend it up above your ear or alongside your ear, just as far and high as it will go. And then find that opposing stretching sensation. So your hip is gonna reach down like it's reaching towards the right foot. Hand is gonna reach up and think good morning stretch. Inhale and find some length. And then when you're ready, release, pull the left knee back in towards your heart space, bring the right knee into me. And then we're gonna just take those knees together, draw them in circles, go in one direction. Just checking back in now, how does your back feel? Can you offer it any soothing motions that might bring it back to any places where you might still be noticing any tension? If you're going in one particular direction, maybe reverse, go the other way. And then when you're ready, we're gonna head right towards our Shavasana from here. So you're gonna start by releasing your handhold and then ask your body where is gonna be your best Shavasana. Would it feel good to come into constructive rest? Would it feel good to have a blanket or a sweater or your socks? Give yourself a moment to get yourself into that tucked in position. And then once you've got yourself kind of sort of figured out, you've got your body kind of arranged the way you like it to be, your costume is in place, your hair is in a good position, notice your breath and then just give it a little bit of time here for your breath to come back to a natural rhythm. And as you give your breath a little time, notice the solidness of the floor beneath you. Reach out from every angle, notice the corners of the floor, walk your imagination up the sides of your walls, up to the ceiling. You've got this solid, strong place all around you where you're safe and secure and now breathe your body into that space and let everything else go.
You always have the option to stay in your Shavasana just as long as you like. But if you feel ready to do so, or if your morning requires it, start by gently twinkling the fingers and the toes as you gently roll your head from side to side. So keeping the back of your head connected to the ground if you can, lightly massaging out the back of the head, twinkling the fingers, wiggling the toes, eyes opened or closed, totally up to you, just whatever feels better to you. And then as you start to move here, you may notice a slightly deeper breath come back into your body. If and when you feel that slightly deeper breath come back into your body, maybe you invite some bigger generous movements in. Maybe you move your knees, maybe you move your ankles, maybe you move your wrists, maybe you keep that head moving, maybe you let your head come to stillness. Any little bit of bigger movements here that let you come back further into your body and find that sense of awakeness. And then once you feel like, okay, I'm waking up, things are feeling good, I feel that slightly deeper breath, maybe if it feels good, you'll walk the legs long and stretch the arms up and overhead. And then just one big yawning stretch, reach through your fingers, reach through your toes. And then just as you release that big yawning stretch, roll onto one side. So into a fetal position, whichever side you like best, there's no right or wrong on this one. Pause in that fetal position for a moment and then come back to that sense of awareness of the solidness of the floor underneath you. And then with a little bit of a press into that palm resting on the ground, gently ease your way up to a comfortable seated position. So maybe coming up to Sukhasana with legs crossed or any seat that lets you sit up nice and tall. And then we're going to just do a nice big vigorous pat around the heart space. So I'm going to start by patting and then I'm going to tune it down a little bit just so that it's not banging the microphone. But we're going to take a nice big open palm. Think George of the Jungle. So you're going to really find a little bit of vibration as you pat, pat, pat your heart space. Close your eyes down. Notice your breath. Notice the vibration in your breath. Go for as much of a vigorous George of the Jungle stimulate in that heart space just as much as feels good to you. And then we're going to take that similar pat, pat, pat motion, but we're going to do it around the abdomen. So you're going to pat, pat, pat your abdomen. Think center line of the abdomen best you can. So we want to think where the solar plexus is down to the belly button. So we're really going to pat around that center line of the abdomen just as much as feels good. A slight firmness to your belly. So it's not just beating yourself up. And then once you've pat, pat, pat it around that abdomen just enough, leave one hand on the belly, take one hand to the heart, close your eyes down, come back to your breath for just a moment. Breathing in love and gratitude for yourself, for your mind, for your body, and for all of your hard work. And then breathe in a whole bunch of extra love and gratitude that you can carry with you through the rest of your day and share with anyone who might need it. And then when you feel ready, gently lift up through the top of your head, gently open your eyes. I bow to you. Happy Thursday. Woo, you guys worked hard today.